Hi there, I'm Matt Holland and you're watching Irish Football Fan TV. Hello and welcome back to Irish Football Fan TV. Today we're delighted to be joined by first team player and academy coach for Shamrock Rovers, Lukey Brown. Firstly Luke, thank you very much for coming on the show. No, cheers for having me on. Um, so the first thing I just wanted to ask you about is obviously there's a lot of talk about um, Shamrock Rovers Academy and stuff like that. And with you being a player and a coach, what was it that got you into the coaching? Well, it was always something I wanted to do. Um, even it was something I kind of dipped in and out of even as a teenager. And when I was coming back from a cruise injury about 16 months ago, Damien Duff asked me if I get involved with the national leagues on the 15 team that was starting. And it was just a brilliant opportunity for me to obviously work with like the elite players at that age and learn from Damien Duff. So it was something um, I just wanted to get stuck into straight away and it's kind of let on from there. Yeah, it must be a real honour for someone like Damien Duff to ask you that. Is, would he give you any pointers or something like that? Or would you be learning from him every day? Yeah, like I played with him uh, when he came back and signed for us. So I kind of got to know him back then. And then he came back in as a first team coach. And so, you know, it was, he, he helped me a lot when I was coming back from injury, doing a lot of one on one sessions with me. So I got to know him very well. And obviously, I'm very grateful for the opportunity he's given me. And it's just unbelievable learning from him every day. Um, you know, you see a player who's played at that level, and people, I think, presume that they're going to be a top coach. And it doesn't always work out like that, but he's. He's absolutely brilliant, like, and I do learn from him every day. Yeah, he seems to put a lot of emphasis on the coaching as well. He's seen a lot of stuff in the papers and stuff. He has the kids getting up at the break of dawn. I don't know how many how many times would they train a day? Uh, so we were they were in twice yesterday. They usually do about five sessions a week and a match, and some of them sessions can be two and a half hours and involve gym work. So they're training more than I'd say they're training more than any team in the country. Yeah, but it's, it, he would know the way if anyone because he's played at the top level. Like you look at he he went to Chelsea at the time where they were you know at, at the peak. Exactly, like and um, his big thing and his emphasis is on kids of that age, particularly in this country, is just contact hours with the football. Like, um, I think you see when an international team, senior international team, play, one of the criticisms that gets put on them is that they're not maybe as comfortable on the ball or playing a certain style of football as as other countries. And he he's just big on kids being comfortable with the ball, and you know, there's, there's very even we very rarely even do a warm up without the football. So the amount of contact time they're getting. Um, it's like I'm seeing the development before my own eyes at the minute, and it's it's brilliant. Like yeah, and obviously you're pr producing quite a few players now into the first team, and we're going to get to that in a later bit. But just in terms of uh, the first team itself, a bit of a frustration, a uh, bit of a frustrating um, kind of start to the season. But you seem to be you seem to be clicking <coughs> now more so. I know Graham Burks have to leave and stuff like that, which obviously is a big loss. But is, is that something that kind of made you gel more together? Obviously, it was a big loss for you being friends with and stuff. We'll get to that in a bit as well. But just in terms of you know, it was a frustrating, frustrating start, and now now you seem to be clicking. Yeah, at the start of the season, like we, I think after seven or eight games, we had the chance to beat Long or Watford and go top of the league. And after that, we kind of had a bit of a hiccup, and we lost a bit of momentum. And then consistency became a problem for us for a while. You know, it was two steps forward, one step back, and I think the last maybe six weeks, we've really been quite consistent, kept clean sheets, won some big games, and um, obviously Europe was thrown in the middle of that as well. And it set us up now to you know we're put ourselves in a good position to go and finish the season strong. Yeah, I mean, is is Europe what is Orion now? Because I imagine it's pretty much now between yourselves and Waterford. It looks like anyway. Yeah, um, I wouldn't rule out Derry either because last year, um, at a similar point in the season, I think we were maybe eight or nine points off Derry, and we ended up finishing a few points ahead of them. So you can't rule them out. Obviously, Pats have won I think two in a row. Um, Waterford have you know they have their hands on third place at the minute so it's up to us just to keep knocking off wins and hopefully catch them. Yeah, um, and you said too far away now to be honest, um, especially if you keep the clean sheets the way they're going. How many is you have there? I think we're on, um, I think including the 90 minutes in Sweden, we're on seven and eight, I think. Yeah, which is not bad, bad going. Is that something you've been focused on, that the coaches have been focusing on? Uh, to be honest, like, we did a lot of great work, particularly in pre-season on like, our defensive shape and you know, unit work and stuff. and. I, th I thought like even at the start of the season we defended well, it was just maybe a couple of individual errors at times, and myself included, that gave away goals, it wasn't you know, like a system error or anything like that. Um, and recently just lads have been playing well individually and Gavin Bazoon has come in and done really well, Adam Manis since has come in and uh, lads are playing with confidence. Yeah, now you touched on um, Gavin Bazuna there and he seems to have a serious rise, I mean he was, I think you were coaching him at underage level and now he's coming in and he's you know, he's doing very well, he played in Europe, he saved a, a penalty from Kieran Sadley, who's one of the league's best penalty takers. So, um, 
just in terms of being his coach and now his teammate, what's it been like for you? Well, like he was eligible to play for the team I coached last year, but he was he was playing on the night team and he was only 15, so I didn't really get to work with him too much. He played uh, a couple games for us or a game for us earlier in the season this year, and we had a trip to Chelsea and. I went as part of the staff and he went as part of the playing squad, which was bizarre considering the next day we were back as teammates with the first team. But Gav's just a great kid, like he's um he's really kicked on this season. I think his ability is there for everyone to see now after his first few games, but it's the most impressive thing is just his mentality and his attitude and how down to earth he is. Yeah, and I think it, it, the great thing is now that um, the manager's come out and said that he's going to at least stay for his exams, which would be big for him. And you know his development as well, because if he keeps getting games over here and playing first team football, it's only going to help aid his development, regardless if he goes to a club or not. Exactly. Um, it's something he said to me like for the last probably year. He's always said he's adamant he wants to do his leading sir. Um, personally, I think he, he he will go on and play in England at a high level. Uh, I'm sure that's his ambition, his aspirations, and everyone's you know fully believes he's capable of doing it. But you, you don't want to rush him. Like he's only played five games. He's still 16. He's got his leaving cert in a year's time, and it's just a great place for him to be at the moment. Just learning from like a goalkeeper coach Jose, uh, Alan Manis, Kevin Horgan, so, and you know getting games. Um, in the meantime, it's just a great place for him to be for the next while. Yeah, and uh, and it kind of goes to show, like obviously you're touch, talking about uh, England, and obviously your mate Berkey going over. He obviously came back, learned his trade, and went back over. But uh, just in terms of your, you had a, previously had a rivalry with him. Which I thought was funny. I was reading up on it. Um, can you talk just a little bit in, in depth about that? Yeah. So growing up, I played for Kevin's and he played for Belvedere, and we would have been the top two probably teams in our age for you know schoolboy football. And um, we used to just hate each other. Like um, they were always like the most high tension games in the season, and obviously a bit of a local rivalry. A lot of players kind of playing with each other on the Dublin team, and me and him just didn't get on ever. And then it progressed to I moved to home farm and. We then became like the we were kind of Belvedere's biggest challengers, and he was still there. And I remember I went on a trip with him to South Africa with the home based development squad, and just barely spoke to him. Like just didn't want to sit beside him at lunch, dinner. Didn't want to sit near him on the plane. And it just kind of culminated with his last game for Belvedere before he went to Villa. And um, I was playing left back, he was playing up front. And about 20 minutes into the game, me and him were just melting at each other, and it looked like it was going to turn into something else. And um, I think we probably had to be pulled apart and his uncle Wayne, who was his coach, he just said to the ref, let me get him off. Like, So that was his last ever game before he went to Villa. So when he came back to Rovers last year, he was reminding me that I basically cut short his last ever match for Belvedere. So it was funny looking back in it. Yeah, and then um, how was it then if he was a rival of yours, then he came in and becomes your best friend? How did that kind of that relationship form? Well, like it was obviously years ago, and boy, since... Um, he signed like since that to when he signed for Rovers and he said to me that when he walked in on the first day of training at Rovers he saw me and just thought bollocks like he's not going to like me he's going to make sure no one likes me obviously that was never going to happen uh, I had long since forgotten about it and just the way things happen we ended up being you know best mates on the team uh, do a lot we did a lot of stuff outside of football as well went on a couple of trips with him and that and just really got along. It was funny that we went from hating each other to being such good pals, but it's just the way these things happen in football. Yeah, and I also I I think I seen it might have been on your Instagram story where it was um you said here we are a year ago. I think it was it was an Ireland game. I don't know what game it was, and there he was playing. Was it the Denmark game? Yeah, we were in. We went to Copenhagen for the the playoff, um, and then what was it? So that's November. To June, or so. he's playing for Ireland and scoring. And I'm sitting there watching him. It's just ridiculous. Like, but it's, it's like it's it's mad looking at it in terms of how rapid his rise was. But it's not really surprised when you train him every day and you see what he was doing every Friday night for us. It's, it's just it was just natural the natural course of his career. I think. Yeah, because I was over at Blackpool last week and I was speaking with John O'Sullivan who would have played with him as yeah. well. And he said he was by far the best player uh, in that Belleville team. Um, so just it, are you going to be a Preston fan from now on? Yeah, yeah. I've already joined the. I was telling you that I've already joined the I. Preston's I follow whatever it's called account. Uh, so I don't get a lot of live games, but I get every game on it. And I'll be out. I was chatting to him yesterday. I'm just looking at our schedule and trying to plan what I can get over. I'm sure a couple of lads in the team will probably come with me, or a couple of mates from home who he's kind of adopted as his mates. But I'll definitely be on over here. Yeah, hundred percent.
Yeah, so we put out a couple of things on social media yesterday. Um, we're hashtag Ask Lukey and uh, gave our fans a, uh, the opportunity to ask you a couple of questions. So hope you don't mind. Um, the first one is Sean Hennebury asks, what's his opinion on League of Ireland and how can it be improved? Yeah, I think um, like it's a great product. That, like a lot of the, obviously you can see a lot of the senior international team have come from the league, and I think that could be that should be the major selling point. Like come and watch the next generation of internationals before they leave, and they're only down the road for me and that kind of thing. But in terms of how it could be, can improve, it's like facilities. Um, I'd say only half the Premier Division's grounds are up to the standard of teams that want to be competing in in Europa League and that. Um, I know clubs are getting their houses in order in terms of training grounds and stadiums, slowly but surely, but that, that's definitely where a lot of headway needs to be made. I think one advantage the league has is it plays through the summer, and obviously the World Cup was this year, but regularly there's no football on TV in the summer. And I think that could be an avenue that whoever the powers are that be are, you know, they could explore getting TV deals and stuff, maybe market it more, market it more even selling it to you know, different countries. There's always... Um, there's always uh, a gap in the summer, like you say, on TV, and why not fill it with League of Ireland football? Yeah, especially because there's, there's always people looking to bet on games and want to watch them. Yeah, like, like I've, I've been abroad in the summer, places like Greece and stuff, and random people are saying, you know, they bet in the league all the time. I'm sure the, these kind of people would want to watch the game, so maybe that's something that, that can be done. Yeah, so there you go. anyone in the higher authorities, you heard it first. Um, Sean O'Kelly has three questions, so I'll just go. One, two, three. Uh, one is, how does Luke keep such a great attitude when he hasn't played as much as last season? Uh, I think it's just, like, you can say, oh, it's my job, blah, 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 but I think it's just it's just in me since I was a kid. I like to be professional. I like to stay in shape. Um, I wouldn't like, I don't like to sulk around like that, and I think that's the least your teammates deserve from you and the staff, you know, it's not everyone can play every week, and if, if you're not in the team, it's up to you to, you know, Keep working hard and stay ready if you get that chance. So it, it's that's that's how I look at it. There you are, Sean. That's that's question one answered. Number two, he says, uh, did Luke think third spot was gone uh, at the start of the season when re when the results were all over the place? No, definitely not. We never lost sight of of third place. And the top two kind of pulled away quite early, which was disappointing from our point of view. But I saw last year Derry opened up a gap on us much later in the season, and we caught them. You know, we caught them and went to both them by a few points so we didn't panic we knew um, we knew what we had in the dressing room and we knew just if we, if we became more consistent that we could get to our play so obviously we're only in fourth now it's not like we've got there and we're, we're cruising to third place there's still a lot of hard work to be done yeah you won't be happy till you, till you do get it if yeah. you do um, number three funny enough um, would you consider a change of position to centre back as I feel Rover centre backs aren't great and he's originally a centre back when he played for both? Uh, first of all, I think... Um, and that's him saying it, not me. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, I think our centre-backs have done really well this year, particularly the last few weeks. They've been vital in keeping the clean sheets. and like There's been a lot of competition there between, say, Joey, Lee, Pico, Ali. Um, I can play there. Sam Bowen can play there. So there's competition there. Um, I do enjoy playing centre-back. I played there in a couple of cup games recently, and I played there against Celtic and it's a position I'd be open to playing. Like I'd play anywhere to get a game. I know it's an old cliche but it's it's true like and so yeah I'd probably like I've been told that people think I'll end up there when I'm older but for now um like think, Maldini. Yeah exactly yeah so yeah I wouldn't really know. Okay and there you are Sean that's all your questions uh, answered. Um Riley Parsons uh, this is the guys who do uh, Tales of the East End podcast uh, it's a Sean McCrover's podcast. Um <coughs> fan of the show as well. Um, he asks, uh, who does he prefer, Gary P or the prof? <sighs> Tough one. See, I was there tells from the East Stand uh, quiz winner last year. Unfortunately, had a bit of a dubious decision in the first round this year. I got knocked out and the prof got me back in through the back door, so I'm going to have to say the prof. All right, well, there you are there, lads. Um, well, Luke, thank you very much for coming on the show. It's been an absolute pleasure, and you're welcome back any time. If any of our League of Ireland shows, we'll have to get you on again. Cheers. And uh, thank you very much for your time. Cheers, Paul. Thanks. Um, guys, if you like this video, uh, don't forget to subscribe. Give us a like on all platforms or follow. And uh, as always, thanks for watching our Football Fan TV. Have a great day.